All right, what's up, guys? It's Mitchell or Deity, and welcome to part two of the guide series. So, quick two things. Um, if you're new to the channel, if you're willing to subscribe, that'd be awesome. We've gained like 600 subs in a couple days, which is insane for Epic Seven. But I'm going to be covering a lot in today's guide. So, this will probably end up being a very long video um, over the or course of this guide series. I'm going to be covering basically everything I could possibly think of. So once you get into day two, the first thing that we're going to go over real quick is going to be guilds. So I will say whenever we get into guilds, join the Discord. Half of Epic Seven is the community of Epic Seven. So if you aren't in any Discord whatsoever, you're not going to get the full experience out of Epic Seven. It just isn't going to happen. You can join the main Discord, free seven, but join if you are wanting a guild. You can join my Discord. I'm going to be making new player guilds. I'm going to have a couple guilds myself, and I'm going to need some of you guys to run them, but I'm going to go over exactly what to do every day for your guild. Um, and that is very important that your guild is doing everything properly because that will make a ton of progression on your account. So guild's going to be one of the first things. Second is... Or, well, what I'm going to go over first, though, is summoning and character um, organization. So I'm not going to talk about what characters are really, really good yet. I'm going to mostly talk about what to do with the overflow of characters you get. So let's do our summons. So you should get 10 summons per day. Um, with the 10 summons per day, you should eventually get a couple of good things. But hopefully you did your first 10 summons yesterday. If you didn't, it's fine. Uh, you'll be able to kind of go from here. So let's go ahead and start our 10 summons. I could have did a, a single 10 summon, I guess, but I always do single summons. So you can get Moonlight characters from Covenant summons. So there's a chance you can get them all five during the seven day period of 10 a day. This is a three star, not not really good three star. I don't think she's used in anything, but the bad thing is you cannot skip if it's uh, not a new character. So Terran Regard, very good. He is going to be used on my Wyvern team. I'm glad I got him. We're hoping for any kind of spark. If it's purple, you can get excited. But one thing is you're going to be saving one copy of each character no matter what. And I'm going to be showing you why on that. It's actually the source of a ton of bookmarks you can get. Almost all three-star artifacts you will sell. So there's a spark. It is a three-star artifact. Aureus, any night artifact would be great. Steadfast Gatekeeper. This actually just got buffed. So this increases the defense of all odds by 5%, decreases damage taken from a leader boss monster. So this is actually pretty good for Wyvern. Uh, I said to start with Aureus, and Aureus is good because it's used in PvP. It's the core artifact for that. But this is actually really good for your front take for Wyvern. So we may end up using this in the guide, but Aureus works on it too. Just e either, one is, either one is really nice. So that is really good to have. But that is the only spark we've gotten so far. Yesterday, I didn't really get anything good, to be honest. I did get one purple spark, and it was Benevolent Roman, which I may end up trying to use on the scout. I don't know. He, he used to be my favorite character in the game. So Alexa, she's going to be a Wyvern unit until I get Mui. Um, there's another four-star artifact. Aureus, there we go. So this is going to be a core PvP artifact. It is very, very good. So, and Daydream Jokers, it's always nice to pull Daydream Jokers, but the game gives you enough that you don't really need to. So, the next thing you're going to be summoning on is the Tamarin banner. So, this is the most important banner to summon on. All other content creators will tell you to summon the limited units because they're limited and you can't get them again for up to a year. But the thing is, if I were to summon Landy right now, some of you guys will be starting after the Landy banner. If I were to summon Landy right now, one, to use her most efficiently, she needs an artifact called Guiding Light, which is a limited artifact. So yes, I could pull her, but I can't even use her for months of playing the game. So she's just a character that's going to sit on the account when she's going to come back in a year. And you can work around not having her. So the, that's one thing that I always kind of disagree on with other content creators that always push you to summon limiteds. Is if you're a new player and not playing the game to your like the fullest because you don't know what you're doing you're not going to be able to take advantage of these limited characters so i still personally think that the most important first summon is going to be tamarind i'm going to do three single summons so i'm going to do some 10 summons to try to push it my cat is going crazy so i'm sorry about that so misty chain not really great so after we do our summons i'm going to show you what to do with your like overflow of everything all right cat stop buddy 
Come here. Come on. Come on. Jump up. Alright. Get him to calm down. Put him in my lap. <laughs> little monster today okay i just woke up so he's excited all right so let's do some 10 summons uh we didn't get a purple spark so with 10 summons you can skip and you can it'll just have all new ones so Mui. so this is a character you hope you get if you do all your 10 summons per day we're not going to worry about building a wyvern team really until day five um because you get a free hp set from logging on day five so you have five days of doing summons to try to get a Mui. And if you don't get him, I'll show you what to do if you don't get him. But I will that he is a wyvern god. So let's keep going. So no spark. So we're getting a little unlucky. We got Kawazu and Rose and a bunch more three-star artifacts. So Rose, if you don't have Krozik, can be used as your front tank for a wyvern. So she, I think, is the second best option if you don't have uh, Tywin. Okay, so we did not get Tamarin yet. So we're just going to go ahead and sit on it. We did get another Taga Hell's Ancient book, though, which is really nice. Uh, we have a ton of characters now and we have some overflow within our thing here so now what we are going to do if you go into your artifact things all four star artifacts you should keep one copy of uh you're gonna end up using them on somebody so it's best just to at least lock one copy um uh this will feed into this we do want a max taga hells or, so the more you uh, imprint them, the higher the ability can go up until you imprint them five times. So we will imprint that. We did get Orius, which is huge for the account. Eternus is really good for Soul Weavers. And we have this. I'm going to enhance this into here. But in terms of three-star artifacts, I'm just going to end up selling all of them. Yes, there is ways that you can utilize them if you really want to. I'm going to save the Daydream Jokers. Like Envoy's Pipe can be okay for your front tank for Wyvern. But I'll be honest, I sell all three star artifacts. Exodus Tanfa can be okay for damage. So if I were a new player, actually, we'll save the Tanfas because we won't have the four star equivalent options. Prophetic Candlestick can be okay too, but I would say those are probably the three best three star artifacts. A good delusion is okay too. But Prophetic Candlestick can be all right because of cooldown. It can be really annoying on like healer characters. Labyrinth Cube, I used to use this, but. You, you get so many artifacts. I will say just save your Prophetic Candlesticks, Exorcist Tanfas, Daydream Jokers, and that's that's all I would save. And you, you'll be fine from there. You probably won't even use the other ones. But whenever you sell a three-star artifact, you get the Power of Knowledge, which can be used to trade in for other artifacts. So let's go ahead and lock one copy of each of these just, just for uh, inventory management. But in terms of four- and five-star artifacts, always save those at the beginning. Like, yes, you're going to want limited artifacts and the powder to trade in for them, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. So as you get going, too, if you have a bunch of copies of an artifact you aren't using, a four-star one, uh, like Rosa Hargana, I probably would just sell that. But for the sake of the guide, let's just, let's just be efficient and save all four-star artifacts. Because I, I know I'm not going to use it. There's some four, four stars you just won't use. Okay, so that is that. Now, next up, we're going to go into our characters. So I'm going to say right off the bat, this is one of the things that is worth spending some on. I'm just going to say for the sake of the guide, put this to 100. Um, because you are going to be locking one of each character. So make sure you have one of each character locked. And then from there, you're going to memory imprint each character. And the goal is to get as many three-star characters up to triple S on their devotion. So we'll go ahead and feed three into her. And the nice thing is with feeding, you get these lesser spirit blooms back. So if you transmit the character, you'll get spirit blooms. If you uh, feed them into another character, you'll get the spirit blooms as well, which is both very important. So. We're going to go ahead and lock all our four-star heroes. We did to get crows at Destina. And then let's lock our godmother, Helen. I'm going to go ahead and transmit my three stars. And we're going to talk about that too real quick. So let me lock this, lock this, lock that. Mui, that is huge that we got. Otil, we're not going to get triple S of her, but it's what it is. We don't really need Rose because we got the other thing. And then Terran our guard, we can lock him. Memory imprint. Oh, wait, I got one of each turn guard. And then we have T-Area there. Okay, so once you sort by name and lock all that, if you pull any T-Areas, you can feed them into Free Spirit T-Area. That is one thing. If there are multiple types of characters, if they have the same name, you can feed the characters into each other. For So a four-star can have a three-star fed into them for their memory imprint, which is really nice. So 
now we have our inventory organized a little bit i'm gonna go ahead and i transmit these low two stars i'm going to talk about this for a second if you were to just transmit them you get stigma so it is efficient to do that but you can also level them up with your penguins and then you can promote them and this is the most efficient way to get uh, spirit blooms you get more value out of doing this but it is more work to do so that's why i don't i don't it's it's not a huge difference in terms of what you get out of it so i don't really push for people to do this so if you look here once we promote this so there it is five star promoted so now if we were to take it and transmit it you see we get four epic spirit blooms out of it so i don't know i don't i don't know this is a lot more work versus just transmitting them it's two stars and you have a little bit less so you can go through that process it is technically more efficient but the way you six star heroes in this game it's so easy that if you want to i'm just going to do my way and you can decide how efficient you want to be in the game we'll just put it that way so next up i'm going to go ahead and imprint a raz with his things just for inventory management so these you get from story you'll get some from regular adventure and then you get the rest from unrecorded history i believe or no you get them for the regular chapter so as you have hero overflow when you are summoning you will see that you'll have all this in here so make sure that you do this and put them in your inventory if you were to click transmit this turns red and if you feed them in it auto transmit them so it puts them it just sells them so you may want to make sure when you're doing this this is not red so if you have a super rare character in here and you accidentally were transmitting other heroes you will lose that character forever but you move those over i'm not going to go i'm not going to uh, rearrange them for now but you will do the exact same thing you'll go in make sure you have uh, i always sort by name and then you make sure you have one of each locked, and then I would feed the Adlay. But for the sake of this guide, I will do that while I'm not uh, recording. So next up, guild. If you are new to the game and need a guild, I'm going to be making new player guilds, and I'm going to be trying to organize them the best that I can. So if you made your own guild, I wouldn't try to join Discord and recruit players to it um, unless you've watched this guide and fully do what I say for the guild in this guide otherwise i'm going to be having people who i know watch this guide create guilds and i'm going to be pushing players into their guild within discord but i will be doing two guilds myself one on the 30 day alt account challenge and one on this account just to get you guys going and i'll probably eventually let someone take over that guild um, but i will make some people who are more interested in the game to be co-captains but join the discord the only way you're going to be led in this guild is if you're in the discord i'm going to say this again half of the epic seven experience is the community if you are not doing the community part of the game and in Discord talking, like showing builds, theory crafting units, you are not going to get as much out of this game. So join the Discord. Also, if you want to play uh, Epic 7 on PC, a link down below for LD Player. Uh, that is what I use. So LD Player is, um, I don't know, the emulators are all different. You might have to try it, and if it doesn't work, you can try one of the other ones. But if you do use the link down below, I do get a kickback, so it's a way to support me. So for the name of the guild, uh... I don't know. Actually, I should have thought about this before I started it. So, uh, I don't know. Just Epic 7 Guild. Nope. Um, uh, this part's hard. I don't know. I'll just name it DD Guild 1. I'll just name it DD Guild. Intro. New players. So, I would not. Th this is me making the guild. In terms of joining, I'm going to be selective. Or, uh, no, I'm going to be private at first because i'm going to have you guys send in discord for me to invite you um and in terms of rank limit there is no rank limit because it's private and then you found it and it was it was open so deity guild um this is just going to be a guild for new players to get into the game and if you find another guild later that does the same thing you're you can just go join that but this way i can continually get new players in that are going to be able to get the progress or progression of being in a guild so first things first every day in the guild you're going to request a hunt material of the highest rarity you can this is the most important thing from a guild never request catalyst never do this it hurts the guild you do not get as much per day out of doing it versus this so all of my guilds if you request catalyst if you did not watch this part of the video you will be kicked day one once you do it 
<laughs> so do not request catalyst if you want to set up a trade you can find two other people in the guild and do some kind of trade but the most efficient thing is to do this like doing runes isn't terrible but if you're going to be part of my guild it's about progressing and being as efficient as possible so your account can get to a point where you are wanting to stick with the game so it is requesting the highest rarity of hunt materials you can't so we're going to go ahead and request this for today next you want to donate every single day no matter how much gold you have donating this is super important because it's going to allow you to get the buffs from the guild and then you get 50 of these brave crest so the next most important part of the guild is going to be one you're going to be trying to get commander's armbands which you get some for donating your proof of courages which you get from doing world boss which unlocks level 50 and then you also get some from doing uh, or you get one per, uh, what are they called? Urgent missions. So these will stack up a lot over the next few days. On my challenge account, I have almost 200 sitting there. But you will be able to donate three per day, and that is the only use for them. So the reason you are going to be focusing guild is because from with Commander's Armbands, you can buy these artifacts. They are five-star artifacts that are free symbol unities, one of the best damage artifacts in the game. Warhorns, one of the best utility artifacts. Guided Decision has... Some use cases, Bastion of Hope is one of the best for uh, Soul Weavers. It's all, all of these artifacts, Proof of Valor is one of the most important artifacts in the game. Uh, all of these artifacts are insane. So, or most of all of them. You don't really do Victoria's Flag for probably years of playing the game. But otherwise, Proof of Valor, Symbol of Unity, Warhorn, and Bastion of Hope, these four artifacts are key to getting um, your account stronger. Next up, you're gonna have this other stuff you can buy. You won't focus on it right away. Yes, the gold transmit stones will look nice, but the artifacts are just so much better. Uh, you will be buying your Molagori each week. You will probably, I buy the Mystic Metal each week, no matter what, just it's, Mystic Metals are so hard to come by and Moonlight characters are too nice to have. You will be buying these every week, uh, not these, these, because anything that costs Brave Quest, you will be buying once a week. So you will buy all these. These equipment conversion chests are some of the most important items in the game. So you will be getting those. That's how you can kind of target and get specific gear you're looking for. You will buy this Labyrinth Compress every single week. And then any overflow you have, you can buy infinite artifact charms depending on how much extra Brave Crest you have. That's why I push everyone to do guilds efficiently. Because as you get further into the game, artifact charms are one of the most rare resources. Because there's no way to get more of them. You're pretty much locked behind. You can only buy them here. You can get some from weekly rewards and you can buy them from like the rare shops. That is it. So artifact charms are some of the most important things to, to get. And this is the best way to get them if you do guilds properly. So this is very important for progression of your account. So make sure you are doing what I like the things with aid are requesting the highest rarity and donating every day. Make sure you are doing that. That is the most important part of being in the guild. Last is going to be weekly missions. You are going to want to complete all of these in the guild because these rewards are very, very good. You get a summon here of elemental bookmarks, which elemental bookmarks some of the highest rarity summons in the game. And then you are going to get the conversion chest where you can select which piece or which conversion material you want. You get a gold transmit stone, which is huge. And you get 80 commander armbands, which I just told you about the artifacts that you can trade these in for are some of the best in the game. So these are very important to do. Plus you get a little reward for each of uh, these. So all of that is very important, as I've said 17 times. Next up, if you're donating and doing those missions, you get honor coins, which the guild leaders and co-leaders can then buy EXP bonuses and uh, gold bonuses. I will... It used to be the gold bonus was the most important thing to have on the account. Now the XP bonus is super, super nice too. So you're going to be doing that. And if you are donating your proof of courage every day, you get this guild supply chest, which can give uh, sky stones. It can, it can give like 200 sky stones. And you can get one of these per week. So this is just a ton of progression that if you're doing your guild properly, logging in each day to do your guild stuff takes 10 seconds and then you move on. So guild war is the last thing we're going to talk about. Guild war on new accounts, we are just going to be doing whatever we can for the first few guild wars um we're gonna end up fighting other low guilds and then you, i'll be able to kind of show you an intro to guild wars once we have our first war which will be tomorrow so with this you just put whatever characters for at first that's the best you can do you will eventually within a couple days be able to kind of take some characters in and out of that to make them better and that will be it for our 
um, guild overview. So to end that, just join the Discord. If you're wanting to get into a guild, join the Discord. I'm not going to accept people that aren't in the Discord because if you're not talking, it kills the entire community aspect of this game. So I will only accept people that are in the Discord, but I will try to make sure everyone who joins that is looking for a guild will be able to get into a starter guild today. And also with Guild Wars, that, that is the best way to get Mystics. So with Guild Wars, once we get to a point where you can do your attacks and feel confident, that is the most important way to get Mystics, which is going to allow you to summon on the strongest characters in the game and the Moonlight or uh, the Mystic Summon rotations. So per month, you can get 50 times 3 times 4. So you get probably on average 600, 600 Mystic Medals a month. For being a mediocre guild, you get about 600 Mystic Medals a month, I think. So it's only 12 summons, but 12 summons is very, very important. And like for my main account, I get about a thousand a month from Guild Wars. So I know that it's a thousand a month is what only one tenth of an ML5, but that on top of everything else, it makes a huge difference. So now we have gone over characters. We've talked about artifacts a little bit as to at least what to do for now. I will be covering it all way more into detail as we get into points where that will be a thing. But if you were unlucky like me and did not get your uh, Tamarin yet. You can still keep using Destina, it's fine. So what we are going to be doing is once you clear the Tamarin side story, you'll be able to get bookmarks from this. So if you have, if you didn't end up finishing this, make sure you do it and make sure to at least get the bookmarks from it that you can trade in for now. This story will sit here for a while. We have three days before we can start another side story, which will allow us to get even more resources. So uh, just make sure you get the 60 bookmarks, or I don't know if it might be more, but 60 bookmarks from that. Once you're done with that, then we are going to be going into adventure and we are going to be clearing some of chapter two. So this is what I'm gonna be working on for right now. I will come back once I get a little bit into it and kind of give a guidance of what I did or what I'm gonna be working on next. I don't know how much more I'll cover for today. It just depends on how far I get. And then I think just covering that is pretty important though, but I will be back once I finish some stuff. See you then. All right, guys, so this is going to actually be pretty much today's video is just going over guilds and then the character and artifact organization at the beginning. I'm going to make uh, part three later today. I'm going to be working on it all day while I'm working on uh, people's account work to the side. But the joining a guild is so important. I want to push everyone to do that right now so that you can start getting the bus while you're farming the next part. So I'm going to talk about what to farm, but join the Discord, get in the guild. Uh, we'll get all that set up today. So do that first next is still going to be focusing on your adventures path once you equip enhance equipment to plus 15 then you're going to need to promote a five star to six star so in order to do that you're going to just continue adventure until you start failing stages if you end up failing a stage then that's when you'll need to go readjust and upgrade some gear on your heroes but keep doing this and once you get to a point where you're stuck within the story you'll continue to earn sky stones and your regular rewards so make sure to claim all this obviously you'll get some bookmarks that you can use on tamarin if you didn't get it if you get tamarin stop summoning for now and i'll tell you what to do with your summons later but if you get tamarin just switch her out for destina for now and uh, have her on your team and you can put whatever gear you have on destina on her instead so just keep focusing on that clear as far as you can on that if you get stuck then you will go to side story. Like I said, make sure you finish the Tamarin story first. And then from there, you're going to go ahead and go into Adventure's Path and, or uh, Unrecorded History, sorry, not Adventure's Path, and clear as far as you can into this. And then from there, your goal is to be continuing to clear stages. If you have to go into the Tamarin side story and continue to clear the easiest stage on that, you'll get some leafs out of it, which leafs are really important for later. Once we run out of stamina, you'll see that. But your goal is to keep getting your stigma up. And as you get stigma, you're going to grab these epic spirit blooms. But it is important before you grab the spirit blooms to make sure you are 313 so that you're getting the most efficient uh, buying out of it. So keep buying these once you are able to then promote your free spirit to area to level 60. So you can keep going in as you're clearing stages and you'll click auto select and you will, once you have enough, you'll be able to switch over. So every 25 lesser spirit blooms equals one of these and like every four of these equals one of these or something. So just try to get up to 20 of these or in any combination. And if you have like 16 and you hit that, it'll ask if you want to auto trans, uh, or like convert the other ones to purples, just do that and then promoter. And once you get to that, 
then that's when I'll come back and show you what to do in the next part of the video. But those are the three things you should be focusing on. Next also that you could do is, um, I wouldn't do Labyrinth yet. Uh, if you do have five Labyrinth tokens, then before the end of the day, if, you, if your day is about to reset, you can make sure to use one. And just you, your goal is to just clear all of these. Just get as far as you can into them. This gear sucks, so don't worry about getting it. Uh, the, these are important to get. But just focus on getting through the stage as much as possible because the end goal is to clear Malakas' consciousness as fast as possible. So you just want to get to the boss as fast as you can, grab the chest along the way because they do have bookmarks and whatnot. So you can, you can use one of these, but I will be doing the lab guide as part of the video later tonight. And then Abyss. Just use the same Abyss or the same con or team you're using to clear your regular content to clear Abyss. As far as you can, you can go ahead and claim this that you got from your other rewards and make sure to trade in a leaf or you don't have to, but if you want to trade in a leaf, it'll help you get uh, to. So the goal for Abyss is to get to floor 70 because it's part of the adventure spat challenges. So the faster you get to floor 70, the faster you get max rewards out of that. So that's what I was saying. If you want to trade a leaf and you can, I will be making guides on how to beat the later stages. But uh, your current team that you're using for this, as you level it up, it's gonna, it should be able to clear all the way to floor 70. There might be one or two stages you might have to change one character, and I'll show that, uh, or when you should change the character. But for right now, all these stages are so easy. Just clear as far as you possibly can with all the resources that it gives you. So that is one other thing you can work on. But and other than that, that's, that's really all we got. So focus on that. I'll be back with the other part of the video. But last, last shout out again. Link to the Discord down below. Join the Discord. Um, if you want to play uh, Epic 7 on PC, you can use the emulator link. That I'm telling you, Epic 7 on your PC is so nice, especially as we get into day or, to, or the next part of the guide. So not next video, but the video after that, I'm going to be talking about most optimizing or how to best optimize your unrecorded history runs to make six stars as fast as possible. But the second part of the video today that will be uploaded tonight is going to be going over Labyrinth, a little bit and then pets so the pet system you should have unlocked by then and that's going to allow you to auto so all of that will be later today but the focus of this is to get you in a guild as fast as possible but hopefully i see you all in discord and then if you're new subscribe it'd be awesome so you don't miss these videos as they come out and i will see you all either in discord or in the next video peace out